Welcome to the video. Hey, 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 hey. Let's go. All right, so we're going to be analyzing some of my goals. And one of the reasons we haven't done this on this channel is because I think most of those videos are boring and they suck. This guy was here and then I wanted to do this and then I didn't. I tried to do that and then I kicked the ball and the fender stopped it. I wanted to do that and then I got, I just, I don't give a shit. That's stupid. Give me something that I can use now. Teach me something that I don't know. And that's what we're going to try to do in this video. All right. So I'm going to try and get you guys in this beautiful head so you can understand what to do when you're in that situation in the game. Let's go. Right, and that was Spice Girls, Spice Up Your Life, coming in at number six. I'm joined by my co-host, Billy. How you on, mate? Billy's on. Thank you so much, Angus. we got the big game today. We're giving away two tickets. England, Spain. You're on 96. Let's go. 11th caller. Call in right now. Right, let's check the lines, Billy. Grab your phone, Billy. Yep, I got it. 11th caller, congratulations, mate. You've won two tickets to the Euro 96, England versus Spain. Hey, y'all, it's John Brown visiting from across the pond. I was actually wondering if you had any tickets to the USA game. Euro 96, mate. There's Ain't no, no US. Ain't American in this. How, how is there no American in this? We're the best footballing nation in the world. Well, who, who is even England's quarterback? We're talking about real football, mate. Oh, you're... Talking about soccer, why would anyone watch that sport? Nobody ever scores, and I guarantee that game's going to end 0-0. Zero, zero. If you're so confident, call back in after this show. If it's 0-0, zero, zero, we'll say American football is the best game in the world. How about that, mate? All right, I'll call you guys after my nap. Hang up on this moppet. For now, let's go ahead and listen to some Backstreet Boys, yeah? Referee, you freaking mobbing. Come on, mate. Bloody hell, Gary Neville. Bring it home, mate. Bring it home. Right, so nil nil. Not what you like to say, but England's taking the match. Billy, thoughts? That's how the game works sometimes. But, uh, you know, we did make a bet. We got to say our words. So we're going to get our American caller back on. Yeah, yank. Hey, hey, guys. I just woke up, saw the score. So uh, let's hear it. Oh, Roy, right, mate. Well, we're a man of our words, so we're going to go ahead and say it. All right. I'll take it on the chin. All right. I'm a man mm -hmm. of my word. All right. Here it is. Yeah. On three, Billy. Yep. American football is. What the f? Take what your you stupid talking about, you sport and go to f hell, mate. Take it to Yorkshire so and f it up your black. Oh, you f so big shout out and thanks to One Football, of course, for letting us act like complete idiots in all the videos that we do with them. If you guys want to recreate your own moments, goals, things like that from Euro 96, you can do that with hashtag Relive Euro 96. Make sure to check out the app. The link is right down below. You can support the channel by clicking on it, download it, and checking out all the new articles and stuff like that because we all know there's not a whole lot of soccer games going on at the moment. So One Football app, check it out right down below. And with that, let's get straight into the vid. All right, so this is a counterattack. As you can see, Gotti passes the ball to Lasha. Lasha swings it way wide quickly out to me. I'm going to pause it right here. So I'm on the, on the far right side at the moment, but I'm actually playing attacking center midfield. So I drifted wide in this game to find space, which is something that I talk about all the time, especially if you play in the middle. You can find space always on the wings if you're not touching the ball. So that's what I did. Now, one of the first things you're going to notice is that as we hit play again, all of my first few touches are Boom, straight at this guy. How many times have we talked about in 1v1 situations, especially on the wing, as soon as you get the ball, you want to go at them, all right? Sometimes you have to lure them in, but at this, the ball is coming from a counterattacking position to me. I don't do anything special at all. And so if we go back and we see that again, my first touch is good, takes me in. My next couple touches start to take me inside. The defender doesn't have a chance to attack me at all. He has to start backing up. So we've done nothing special, no moves, nothing, just like we've talked about, that simple principle of getting the ball, taking a good first touch, and taking your first steps at the guy is going to create a lot for you. So then I, as I cut inside, I want to stop it so we can look at my boy Turko, my brat is Bosnia, uh, how he actually makes space for me. So 
as I'm coming in, you see his run is actually not even really diagonal, but it's straight between the center backs. So he can also, A, get out of my way in case I want to dribble into the space where he's at. Okay, and then next, he's obviously creating space for me and space for himself because it's very possible. Had I noticed beforehand what he was going to do, I could have maybe bent the ball with my left around to put him in on goal. All right, but I was dribbling so fast that it didn't happen. He made the run. I squeeze it in between those defenders. He's not offsides. At least, I, for the most part, I can't tell, even though that guy's can blah, 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 he's offsides. This is what you got to do. So if there are any defenders out there listening, you might as well just throw your hand up every time, but you better react. And uh, so he does that. Now, as he does that, I pushed him pretty far wide, not as wide as I really wanted to. And so he did a really good job of taking a good first touch to then... This is the subtle things that you guys playing at a high level, you're only going to notice. All right. So notice that when he gets in on goal, he could take, he has all the time and space in the world, but what does he do? He understands that the one thing that he wants to do right now is get his head up. All right. So he takes a touch and the way he takes the touch gives him time to immediately look and see what's going on. And then I think we have Gadib here. Uh, who was playing on the left wing, who sprinted all the way to get here. He makes a run near post, which allows for me to run back post. And that guy, I don't know why he's not following me. And the rest of them, they don't know what's going on because it's behind them. He plays an excellent ball, hard, low, on the ground, straight into me, easy tap in, and the game is now tied one-to-one, -one, but I want to win, which is why I grabbed that ball. So to see that whole goal just straight up without any without any interruptions, straight out. Like I said, first touch is in. Inside, he's on his back foot. Great run in from Turkovic. Boom, excellent touch. You just keep your runs going. And that's what created the goal, all right? So from the second that it got going there, it basically never stopped running. Once I got it, I took the touch, cut inside. I never stopped running. There's only two attacking players in the box. Or sorry, there's three attacking players in the box, and there's I don't know how many guys from the other team, okay? All right, so this next one, I wasn't sure that we wanted to put on because I, I didn't score. I actually had the assist, and it's an advanced skill. So I'm not really sure if many of you are going to be able to, to do it and incorporate in your game, but I'm going to put it in here anyway, all right? So as you can see, there I am. I'm playing striker, number nine, in this game, and I'm pressuring the defender who has his back to goal. And as you can see here, I put my hands up like this because I'm trying to signify that I didn't foul him because that's you don't want to do that if you were pressuring a guy in his own defensive half, and he's got his face facing his own goal, it's stupid to to foul them there, obviously. So just remember that for all the attacking players. But as he plays the ball in here, you guys can see, you can't see my face, but what I did, I gave the goalie the evil eye. I went, right? See, it's a technique, you, you kind of got to get it down. I'm not sure if I did it right, exactly right there, but it's fine. Okay, so what you're going to see is obviously the result, which is all you guys should care about, the results. Did this guy create something good for his team? Check it out. Goalie whiffs, boom, pass the ball, the guy wide open in front of goal, boom. I can't remember what the issue is because, you know, in Europa League you have away goals and stuff like that, and I don't remember, but whatever. Evil eye. <laughs> you're welcome. All right, because I want to reinforce this point, we're going to swap the roles this time. So now I'm playing on the wing. I'm playing on the left wing, and our center mid has drifted to the left wing, which means that I can't be out there also, so I have to go inside. So I'm the one making the run now to receive the ball in order to score. So check this out. We got our boy Mosa here, who's crazy. He's crazy. Shout out to Mosa for being a psycho. Um, so he dribbles in. And once again, same principle applies. This defender is actually in trouble because he's one-on-one. -on -one. A guy is dribbling at him, <laughs> and he's able to cut inside. So you can see me here on the inside. Nobody's really marking me, and I notice that, but I see that the only space for me to really open up for him is to get in behind, because if I can run in behind, then he can come inside as he's doing with his right foot in order to take a shot. So all I do is start to curve and curl my run. All those players start to center on, on Mosa. He has the ball. He's in a dangerous position. They forget about me. The only guy that's maybe a little worried is the center back. And as you can see, right next to him is our number nine. 
So he can't really leave. So I'm in a free position. I could have just stayed there. Without making a run, it's possible that he could, we could have played a 1-2, something like that. But the best thing for you to do in a situation like this is to create space. And so that's what I did. So by running in behind those guys gives him a chance to slip me in behind. As I get onto it now, I have the choice here, all right, of hitting it back across. I'm not 100% sure, as you can see, I don't know who's there. And when you don't know who's there, it's still okay for the most part to rip the ball on the on the ground low and hard when you're in this position. Defenders knock the ball in all the time and it's most likely your most dangerous position. But what I decided to do is because this goalie is most likely coming out and gonna go down. So Tyler's talked about this and we've talked about this on GK Goal Ramey. Goalies are taught to go down, to cover the space. That's It's hard for them. Most of them are very tall. It's hard for them to get down and that's what opens up this opportunity. So just to recap, I wanna show you guys what Mosa does at the beginning because it's almost identical to what we showed in the very first goal. I want you guys to look closely at Mosa and how he's dribbling. He takes his first couple touches in nice and slow and when he's ready he goes and moves with pace and precision inside, drops his shoulder a little bit, moves inside. That's the key and cue for me to make my move as well. He slips me in right like that and now instead of shooting, like I said, I go to chip the guy. All right, because it just makes more sense for me to have gone a near post. I don't know who's there. I could have ripped it across. And as you can see in the replay, if we stop it here, the goal is ready. I could have tried to go through his legs. Definitely a possibility. I could have taken a touch maybe and, and tried to squeeze it in near post like that. All right. But the most ideal situation is because we're playing on a, a wet, really nice artificial grass field is that if you can do that little chip, which has more or less been synonymous with Messi, Goalies really don't stand a chance. Even if he stood up like that, it's going to be hard for him to figure out where the ball's going. So as you can see, as soon as I touch the ball, he's already on the ground because he's hoping that I'll go low. And instead, I went high. All right? And that's what created that goal. And then all you got to do is relax and celebrate with your boys. That's it. Let them know, let them know what we're here for. Let them know, let them know what we hear. All right, guys, that's the vid. So each one of you guys that is watching this right now, I expect each and every one of you to go click that like, subscribe, put the bell notification button on, put it on. What you got to lose? Nothing. We just give you dope shit all the time. All right, but seriously, like, comment, let us know if you want to see another one of these videos. Check out 11th Commandment YouTube channel and the podcast, all that stuff going on right here. Subscribe to us. Check out the playlist. We'll see you later. Peace. So believe in yourself, work hard, train hard, it's a model that's found. It's gonna rain me, rocking out a KC, not afraid to take risks.